Jalen Green wins Western Conference Player of the Week and follows it up by tying his career high with 42 points as the Rockets win their sixth game in a row. Oh, and by the way, the GM is back. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another edition of Summit State of Mind, presented to you by the Apollo Podcast Network and powered by Big City Wings. In this episode, we're going to discuss Jalen Green's recent surge and his current accolades in the past week, the Rockets winning their sixth game in a row, and good news, Alperin Shangun is officially off his walking boot. But first and foremost, two things, first and foremost, but point number one, I got the GM back. Let's go. We're so freaking back. Hello, everyone. You. I know you guys have missed me. I've been lost without you. Uh, you know, my enthusiasm and my just my my holy and unholy support for the team. I know everybody has just missed me. Did they though? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I did. I missed I YouTube. Missed you. That's the question of the that's the question missed, of the episode. Did you guys miss the GM? <laughs> we can do that. Sure. Do you want that to be the question? I mean I, I had know. a question, we'll but see, we can we'll, do we can we'll, do two we'll questions. See about that. Two questions. Question number one. Did you miss the GM? Yes or no? Drop your comment on your YouTube. Question number two. Do you believe Jalen has truly turned the corner in terms of his career? So two questions. One, did you miss the GM? Two, did Jalen Green Jalen Green actually turn a corner to now further along his career. And it's a perfect segue, GM. Let's get right into it right now. Jalen Green. Let's get let's go through his accolades just in the past <clears throat> week. Western Conference Player of the Week. Mm -hmm. 40 and, and, and let's talk about the fact that he actually had his Western Conference Player of the Week. And then he follows it up in Washington. Granted, the worst team in the league. Fair enough. Tied his career at 42 points. Sixth career double double. Mm -hmm. The dude is reeking of BDE big dad energy. We're so freaking back. GM, what have we been thinking so far? It's great. I don't have to talk. It's great. I, I, I'm so happy I don't have to talk about this straight uh, out of the gate. What I'll, do you I'll, think about it? I'll tell you this uh, the performance is, I'm not surprised. He does perform very well every March. But I do believe that he has turned the corner, and I will tell you why. Uh, What's going on, especially in the Washington game, they may be the worst team in the league, but the defense that they threw at Jalen, the double teams, the triple teams, they really tested his mettle. The man went off for 19 points in the first quarter, and he didn't really score much until the third. And the way he adjusted, you saw the way he was playing the pick and roll. Him and Jock Landale, him and uh, Jeff Green, Jabari Smith Jr., they were operating it to a T, and Jalen, his decision-making was, great, game plan was they, next said, level. Right? And, you know, Washington tested him. And what did he do? He gave, he took what the defense gave him, passed the ball, made great decisions on the ball, and then when time, was, when time it mattered, when the Rockets had relinquished their lead, Jalen stepped up to the plate and hit a grand slam to get us the lead and to never relinquish it yet again. Uh, the man is... Uh, becoming a father and turning that corner. You know, the difference between now and then is that the way that he is playing obviously is getting hot, but there are so many other aspects of his game. He's playing so much better. His defense has definitely picked up the pace. Uh, his rebounds, his assists, they've all increased. Like you said, his sixth yeah. double-double of his career, he's been getting double-doubles like every other night in this run. And the thing about it is that it's just been so impressive to see. And I'm extremely happy to see this version of Jalen we just need to see it now, hopefully, going into the month of April. And if an opportunity does present itself, uh, an opportunity at the play-in. Oh, my gosh. I know. Yeah. Uh, he said it. He said it. He, he knows and what he I, wants. And, and I popped. I respect it. You know, and I'm I very, popped. very happy that we're in this position. I mean, we could have performed better earlier in the lead. I mean, earlier in the year. But... We're in this position now, and we're doing it without LP, and what it's saying is that there's a potential, not just one superstar, but two superstars. This is not often that players of Jalen Green's uh, positioning, second overall pick, third year leap, quote unquote. It's hard. It's hard for uh, those. You know, you're, yeah, those you, you, it's, it's kind of like where you see, you you know who they are, kind of, to an extent, correct? But with Ime Yudoka at coach... He's kind of molded Jalen in a way that what his expectations were. He struggled in the beginning, but we're starting to see uh, re him reaping the benefits of what he has taught Jalen thus far. So I'm very happy. Everyone knows that I, I'm a big supporter of Jalen Green. You guys 
hop on the bag and wagon. It's all good. We'll welcome you Dude, back. Welcome it's back. Totally Come fine. on back. Come on back. Jalen Green, uh, last <laughs> night, forty-two points, ten rebounds, seven made threes. Officially in the NBA history books, the youngest in NBA history to have those numbers: forty-two or more points, ten or more rebounds, seven or more three-pointers. The youngest in NBA history. So he holds that title. The man is continuing to flash accolades that it that you know we can only dream of. And and a lot of people are saying like, oh, it's because Alperin Shingun, mm-hmm. Alperin Shingun went down, so he's getting more touches. You could argue that point, but uh, Jalen Green was already turning the corner pre. Yeah, when LP was, um, they, they were they, they had were some really good games. And yeah, they were playing off each other. Yeah, very exactly, well. exactly. I thought they were, I thought they were, you know, playing very well, and I thought that the movement was good. But Jalen Green as a whole, I mean, I said it. In the last episode, but like just going, I guess just my point of view, which is, you know, it hasn't changed, but this is just kind of, you know, setting the table now that Jalen Green is going to be the guy and defenses are now going to have to adjust their game planning. Cause that's why I'm saying like part of the reason why I thought that this, these Rockets were on a win streak was because these uh, defenses were starting to, you know, they, they usually shape their defense around Alperin Shangun and the rest of the Rockets. Mm-hmm. Now they have to, Alperin's down now, the scouts are scrambling, the defensive scouts are scrambling, mm-hmm. trying to figure out a game plan. Now now they're, you're going to start seeing it percolate, and like they're going to start kind of def- putting their defense surrounding around Jalen Green. Do you think mm-hmm. the doubles saw the triples against Washington? I think we're going to see a lot more of those. Yeah. Um. Now it's going to be Ime's counterpoints, his counter moves, that are going to be able to get this team even further. Six-game win streak. And but before we get into that, just flowers for Jalen Green. Applause for Jalen Green. I know you can. You're holding the mic, but you can give him a golf clap one time. Jalen Green, Western Conference Player of the Week, averaging 27 plus points uh, per game in the past six games. Absolutely incredible stuff. Uh, we're hoping that this is a, a corner turned permanently. Yeah, I believe it's corner. possible. It's definitely possible. Um, I think people like people that were frustrated at the beginning of the year and people that were holding out hope that he could do this. I think it goes both ways. He was frustratingly playing not so hot earlier yeah. in the season, and now we're reaping the rewards of our faith. Uh, I think it goes both ways, but I mean, I get it, guys. You know, the patience. They just got to patience. These guys are young. You know, Jabari's had frustrating moments. Uh, Very even frustrating moments. Even has had some moments where he's been frustrating. Uh, we're seeing like angry, great games like from, a, like, father. like, what about Amen? Like Amen had a career game last night as well. And the way that the team is playing, everyone's touching the ball. Everyone is, they're, they're playing at a breakneck pace and exposing and utilizing their athleticism in ways that they couldn't before. And it's... Right. It's completely changed the game, uh, upped them to another gear. No, so it's been great. Yeah. I'm curious to see how, how they'll be able to utilize that when LP does come back, whether it's this year or next year. Yeah, no. I, I mean, we'll we'll get to talking about the uh, Houston Rockets and how they've been playing in just a second. But I do want to talk about – you already talked about one quotable from Jalen Green in which that he did state – uh, with Vanessa Richardson, friend of the show, he did say that you know they're vying for the play and they're trying to stack as many W's as they can, and hopefully they can find a way to squeeze their way in. Mm-hmm. Point number two, I love what he did say in regards to that interview, which he did publicize and talk about for the first time, talking about how what's been motivating his play, and he said his family's been motivating his play as well as his baby. So I just love the fact that he's he's made it a point to play for something that's bigger than him. Yep, you know what I mean. Yeah, us as 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 family men. You know, we, we, we understand that, uh, you know, turning a corner, it makes you want to play for more than just yourself. And maybe Jalen, for the first time in his entire life, is playing more than for more than just himself. So you got to love to see it. It's, it's, it's beautiful stuff right here. Absolutely. It's great. Great stuff. Great Kodak moments right here. I mean, it's, it's showing a sense of maturity. A type uh, of maturity yeah. that you don't typically see from a 21, 22-year-old. And the way that Jalen has carried himself, definitely people have had issues with his character uh based on what he portrays but the man has a baby on the way and he understands that responsibility and to see him take his job a lot more seriously i'm not stating that he didn't before uh it's just mostly a different type of motivation that's motivating him now and i think it's unlocked a different side of jalen green and the man understands like oh man i got a kid on the way i need to play better i want to get get my max contract i respect it i respect it okay let's go ahead and and pivot to our next subject look the houston rockets have won six games in a row gm they are 33 and 35 Mm -hmm. two games under 500 roaring on back when all season 
you know, all hope was lost during the season. We would, were almost 10 games out of 500 at one point. Just hit a wall completely once we got into the new year. We talked about it ad nauseum. Uh, you, myself, and DJ, every time we were together. True. But the Houston Rockets have officially, in a way, turned their corner for the season. And they are nipping at the heels of the Golden State Warriors and the LA Lakers. Officially two and a half games back GM, how beautiful would it be for the Houston Rockets? How poetic, perfect poetic justice would it be for the Houston Rockets to knock out the dying dynasty of the Golden State Warriors Mm. out of play in play? Like, that is where we are now. We we can conversate about it. We're... Two and a half back with fourteen remaining. Yeah. We have a chance. We have, we got it. We it's got not it. like there's only five games remaining it's here. A there's fourteen. Chance. Yeah, fourteen with two and a half. Two and a half back. That is incredible. So like, if we uh, just keep stacking wins, like Jalen said, but let's talk about it right now the recent play of the Houston Rockets jam. What's impressed you the most in terms of how the Houston Rockets have been playing? Their defense. Their defense is what sure. is, is what kept them in the games. That's the reason why Men they're Thompson here. At the four. Yeah, Men Thompson the has been like. <laughs> It's My man's the key. the key to Victor Sigma. Shout out to the Transformers Oh my fans. gosh, see, every time... See, I don't know if I missed that or not. A man, was, a, 80s obscure references? Always. Go on. <laughs> Amen Thompson has just been playing lights out. And he's showing his versatility with more opportunity and more minutes. He's getting more comfortable on the floor. And you, you're starting to see it. He's making breakneck defensive plays. He's cutting to the basket. And everyone is finding Can I it. drop a men's stat line just so you can kind of use Give it? Give it to me. 25 points, 10 rebounds, 2 assists, a block, 10 of 12 from the field, plus 32, the highest plus minus in the entire team. I mean, the man, <laughs> Come on all, now. all that man Come does on is lock down. That's what the, that's what the man does. Lock, lock down. down. That's it. A man is just that. He is that dude defensively. Yeah, so the good. offensive numbers are just icing on the cake frankly like it's all dunker spot it's all yeah dunker spot. <laughs> but you know what that's, that's the best part about him at six seven it. extremely athletic and lengthy he can guard these uh these threes and these fours and maybe occasionally on uh, occasional uh what's the word uh possessions mm. guard up the five and we're utilizing him in a way that teams are not prepared for i mean he may not have the strength that comes along with playing as a four in the dunker spot but he's got the length He's got the discipline, the IQ. He knows what he's doing on the defensive end. And I'm pretty sure that the team has, you know, prepared him for this in order to get more minutes. So I, I'm just extremely happy to see a man break through that wall, especially the rookie wall. He's been playing incredible. And he's been playing amazing basketball. So, hey, man, shout out to you, man. Like, honestly, like, you've been killing it. And if we can keep riding this wave going into the last 14 games of the season, then. The potential of breaking down that breakdown dynasty of the Warriors. Jesus, get out of here, guys. Go home. I know. Go seriously. to your home. Go home. Go to your home. No, like, I, the Houston Rockets defense has been so good lately. Like, it's been incredible. And I mentioned this last episode, but I love how, like, you can tell that the Rockets are playing for more. They're mm-hmm. playing for each other. It's almost yeah. like one of their soldiers went down, so it's like, Man, like we're gonna have, we're gonna play, we're gonna play for you. Like we're not just play for him, but play for each other and like have a strong end to the season. Cause like about three fourths of the way through the season, a lot of the te- a lot of uh, let's just be honest, a lot of the fans have been, you know, they've grown livid of it. Myself included, I wasn't happy with it. I didn't like where we were. I thought we took like five steps back. Mm. But the fact that this team was able to use this as an opportunity for themselves to catapult themselves forward by their defense, by their offense, being able and shout out to Ime Udoka who who has made this change on the fly, like putting the pieces in front of him. He didn't expect to lose Tari Eason for the for most of the season. Definitely he didn't not. expect to lose Alper and Shangoon at the tail end of the season when they're trying to make headway towards play in basketball. Like they didn't expect that. The fact of the matter is, is that He's making these adjustments, these substitutions, these rotations on the fly. And let's give Emeo Doka tons of credit because he's hitting every mark to perfect perfection. Mm-hmm. Like, absolutely. And shout outs to the to the Australian legend. Because oh, he came yeah. in. He's coming. Jock Londale is coming in and, like, being an absolute beast. I think he deserves at least a shout out on the show. Absolutely. Because he's been killer lately mm-hmm. in the backup minutes. Uh, basically absorbing all the Shengun minutes with Jabari taking the five spot. J- Jeff Green more or less taking some spot five minutes, but Jock Londale being minutes. What, 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 what's been uh, some good stuff that you've seen from Jock? 
<sighs> man, Jock's been out there. He's been playing impressive. I know we were frustrated with him prior to uh, the trade deadline. Oh, the he, receipts are there. He was not playing so well at all, but uh, the receipts are there. He's been put on a spot where he's got to play minutes now, and he's come through. He's given us great minutes in his limited time on the floor, but he's definitely made an impression. His defense last night, especially in the second half, you'd see him affecting shots in the paint. He's not necessarily getting blocks, but he did get seven blocks last night, correct? He had a career, yep. high. career high. So, you know, blocks. shout out to Jock Landale. You know, SWAT, the, the Sultan, the SWAT from Australia. Let's get it, brother. Are we just using alliteration throughout this entire episode? Sure, Fantastic. why not? I mean, I'll take it. Why not? I mean, I, I, I'm i happy that Jock's playing well. We needed it. We needed him to mm. step up. There's no Steven Adams yet. Uh, and we didn't get a center. Gone. We, didn't, we didn't get a center or, or anything. So right. Jock Landell is the guy, and more power to you, man. You've shown it. I mean, you're getting to the basket. Your, your pick and roll game with Jalen has looked great. And, um, he's finishing around the rim now. He especially. is. He's doing a great job of that. What people didn't uh, realize is that he had an ankle injury, which was pretty serious. Yeah. You know, for, he was kind of working himself back into shape. For for those of us that are athletes or pseudo-athletes, whatever, I'm not going to consider myself an athlete, but I have had a plethora of ankle injuries as I've played basketball all throughout my life. Multiple. Oh, and he's, he's saying it lightly, too. There's been a lot. There's been a lot. A uh, lot. And I've been through a lot of stuff dealing with ankles. And let me tell you, it's really hard to recover from that, especially mentally. And that's something that comes along, you know, when you play sports. That's just right. one of the aspects is, you know, your your mental. Imagine and, a jock size, too. Yeah, seven, seven feet, feet tall, man. That's a lot. I'm 5'8". Probably like, hurting my ankles. That's already hard enough, guys. Probably like, dude, come on. I'll talk down on yourself. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm just keeping it real. You're fine. It's fine. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, you know, the Houston Rockets have been absolutely incredible. Um, And, and I went through the lineup, too, like, uh, like through their schedule coming up i mean a lot of these games i think up until we go to okc next wednesday mm-hmm. because we got a game at home against the bulls winnable yep game at home against the jazz winnable yep game at home against trailblazers winnable yep and then you got then you start going through the test of you go at okc and then at the jazz then mm-hmm. you got the mavs at home those become a little those are gonna be true tester games I mavs think, and like, okc for sure yeah mavs playing okay. in salt lake that's gonna be rough it's always yeah, hard to that's play what there. i'm saying yeah no matter um, what but we have know. to fly our friend vernon out there yeah, you heard, you heard that, Max? We need you, bro. We're gonna, My we're man gonna... said he's going to sign a 10-day. Oh, jeez. You're going to start a rumor. You're going to start a rumor. <laughs> Bottom line, the Rockets are playing very, very well. Jabari Smith's been an absolute beast. Um, Everyone ha- has kind of picked their spots, played very well. And like we said, they are knocking on the door of playing basketball. We're, yeah. we're so close, GM. 14 <clears throat> games. We, I, it, it's doable. Mm-hmm. Uh, Warriors have a game tonight. By the time this episode comes out, they will be playing. So, you know, let's... uh. Put all our good juju out there. Put some prayers out there and pray that they lose against the. Ma- I think they're playing the Mavericks tonight. So, Dallas, don't fail wait, us wait, now. Hang on, hang on. No, no, no. I don't want to. I don't want to just give you. I don't want to give you anything fake. I gotta. I gotta look this up properly. Before. Just to double check. Yeah, I just. I don't want to get this wrong. Let's gotta... see. I mean, I don't know. Who nope, it's it... the Grizzlies. Hi, sir. Uh, well, Grizzlies are playing better, but they're definitely not going to make. The... You know, they're playing at Warriors too with Warriors needing a win. If Warriors don't blow them out, I'm gonna be just yeah. I'm fully expe- Warriors should win, but you never know. Let's well, let's see. They're 35 and 32. Let's see. You never know. You never know. Puncher's chance, right? Cross like, the fingers. Puncher's chance. First yawn of the night already. Yeah, we're out know. here. Okay, <laughs> let's go ahead and move on to our last subject. Obviously, uh, GM, uh, and as we hope for the Rockets to make the play, and hopefully they do. Um, good news on the Alperin Shangun front. Alperin Shangun's officially off the walking boot. I realized Ime Udoka did not rule him out officially for the end of the season. Like, he hasn't said, hey, we're shutting him down. Like, I thought, did he? I don't think he mentioned. I don't think, I don't think they said like, that. Uh, no, Shams is the one who reported that his season's likely over. Right, but, but like, he uh, didn't. I no, don't he, think, he, I don't so think he, he my, essentially put so that. So my report from last last episode was actually wrong. I had thought I read that Imodoka had chosen to shut down Alperin Shingo, but no, he actually kept the door open. Mm-hmm. He's off his walking boot already. This is right along the timeline, 14 games remaining, about mid-April. Will we get Alperin and Shingo back towards the end of the season? That last road trip, maybe. You never know. I, I don't... Okay, so so good news is he's off the walking boot. What do you think? Should Alperin Shingun try to play? What is your opinion? If we're two games back or maybe one game back with like three games remaining... Uh, two games back with three games remaining, I don't see the odds in our favor unless LA no, or Golden State have a rough schedule. But I, I don't know. What if we're tied? Uh, he's probably coming back. Oh, man. But I mean, honestly, like, 
I'm curious to see how they implement the offense again with uh, Shingun and the way that the team has been playing. I'm really curious are, to see how. Um, are you ready for my? Are you ready for my my big uh, my, my big thing? My big whole setup. Why I think what's going to happen when he comes back? Don't uh, be surprised if he comes off this as a six man. Oh, uh, that's a possibility. Because he's coming back from injury. Slowly, at least the first game. But the very I, I, first game. I, I think he may going to go back right back and let a man uh, be the man off the bench. Think right out of the gate. Yeah. But or I mean, okay, well, let Shingun start with limited minutes. Probably. That would probably be the yeah. bet, right? Probably 25 minutes. See a man come on the court with like, you know, in the first quarter, like seven uh, uh, seven or six minutes left in the first. Let LP kind of get some run four or five minutes into the game, kind of see where he's at, and then, you know, monitor from there. But <clears throat> I think that LP will probably start if, they, if he is able to make a comeback miraculously at the end of the year. Uh, but I'm just hoping that we can play meaningful games. That's all I care about. I just want to be. This, these are our playoffs. Yeah, and these are, are, it's happening right now. Yeah, it's the fantastic. first time that these guys on this team, these Houston Rockets, they're playing games that are meaningful, leading to the end of the season. I so mean, not Fred. It's or huge. Jeff. They've yeah, I'm about the young games. guys. Yeah, the, the young, young guys. guys. The core. Yes. yes, the core. I I hope that Shingun um, does. Uh, personally, for me, I hope Shingun does come back. I just don't want it to be at the risk of risking his longevity of his mm-hmm. career. Yeah. Because if it's a second injury, which could mm-hmm. mess with the bone <clears throat> structure, which could yeah. mess with the structure, if there's any like tears there, mm-hmm. uh, you could lose him for the year. So that's why I'm a little. I, for me, I'm just a little hesitant. Like. Yeah. No, I get it. Just be very careful <clears throat> with what you got. You don't want the Tari Eason issue. Yeah. Where you know you did play him and then all of a sudden. He his he reaggravated the injury and it got worse. It's just a it's just, it's just a matter of the team monitoring monitoring him, and seeing how yeah. yeah, seeing how his body responds, but also looking at the standings, understanding that uh, if there's a chance for them to make it in, you want all your bullets in the holster. So I get it. It's just gonna take a very very close microscope on that recovery, and you know just. Depending on how the Rockets are playing, who knows? Maybe they'll already be in the play-in by the time we reach that final week. You know what? You but who, who knows? You never know. You convinced me. <clears throat> Fuck it, I'm in. All right, Shengun, we'll see you at the end of the season. <laughs> I bought in. I bought in. Uh, GM, let's get ready to go home here. Obviously, look, I, I, it's great just to have you back on this show once again. You know, I, I The reason why we have not been able to record together, guys, because our studio is not currently set up we have moved studios so once that new studio is set up we will all be back together again it'll be fantastic yep we're excited for it but of course for one episode only the big man is back the the, the gm is back i decided so, to make a return for this moment one game return t-mac one game 20 return. the t-mac 2010 10 minutes or less <laughs> yeah i played seven minutes eight minutes a game i remember that was that like, was wild yeah dude he was like wild hey, time let me play more than 10 minutes t-mac Jeez, number three please. <laughs> if anyone remembers that. 2010, right before he got traded to the Knicks. All right, let's get ready to go home here. But before we do, we have to give a shout-out and an ad to Big City Wings. That's right, Houston's Wing Joint, Apollo's Wing Joint. One time, we're recording this on a Wednesday, which means if you backtrack to yesterday, we have the best deal in the entire city of Houston. That's right, we got the two for Tuesday. For the price of five, you get ten. For the price of ten, you get twenty. GM, what are your two favorite flavors one time? Oh, man. Uh, what is the You're gold medium. fever yep. and uh, spicy ranch lemon pepper? I'm not re- I'm not really big on the dry rubs, but spicy ranch lemon pepper is where it's at. I'm going to tell you that right now. Speak for yourself. I'm a dry I'm a dry rub lemon pepper guy. But you can go ahead and try your favorite flavors right now. Find your nearest Big City Wings that is nearest to you. That's right. Big City Wings, Houston's Wing Joint, Apollo's Wing Joint, one time. Let's get ready to go home here on another <coughs> successful episode. I've been missing Woo! this right now. I... I can finally get to hear you say it. Do it one time for the people. Give the people. I've been doing it. Give the people what they want to you. Let me give the people what they want. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at JP underscore Marabueno. Make sure to follow our podcast on Twitter and TikTok at Summit, S-O-M-P-O-D. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at Summit State of Mind underscore P-O-D. And make sure to follow our, our family, our brothers, our people at Apollo NBA and at Apollo H-O-U. Make sure also to tune in to Apollo NBA's podcast, Zero Gravity, starring Stoney and our boy, Josh Garcia, our official beat writer for the Houston Rockets. Well, for Apollo HOU writing about the Rockets. Mm. Uh. Mm-hmm. Yes, and you can also follow me on Twitter at Summit Commission. Shout outs to the Apollo Podcast Brother and the other Apollo Podcast Brother that continue to kill the game. That's right. BTD, Beyond the Diamond, the Crown Jewel of Astros Podcast. Be sure to give them your first listen for all Astros content. Shout outs to Apollo Texans off the gridiron. Be sure to give them your first listen for all Houston Texans content. Once again, we appreciate each and every one of y'all for making us your first listen for all Houston Rockets content. 
GM, another successful episode. Let's get ready to go home here. As our producer gives us a go home cue, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode. As I end every episode with a go summit, go Paulo. And that's a one, two, three, four, five, six. Keep winning, baby. Make the play in. Go Rockets. Oh, yeah. And by the way, watch basketball. Yeet. Yeet.